Well, <laughs> I'm the unassimilated uh, immigrant in uh, in that in that respect. Um, you know, I always have to be when I'm on rush. Uh, I always have to be very careful because I always, you know, I'm talking about, you know, I always say, oh, Joe DiMaggio, who was one of the greatest players of American football ever. And then it turns out, like, the guy's a basketball player or something. And so I've always got to be, I've always got to be a bit a bit careful about that. I, I like the grace, uh, uh, I like the grace <laughs> of baseball. I'm not a big fan of, uh, I probably shouldn't say this as a Rush guest host, because Rush certainly is. I'm not such a big fan of American football. I prefer... Uh, rugby to American football. I played rugby for a long time. Uh, I I always like I like the way you don't play it with helmets and you get that old boot crushing into your skull uh, right direct without having to wear any of those uh, shoulder pads or anything. Uh, I played cricket in Bermuda recently for the first time in many years and enjoyed it uh, enormously. And, I, and so I'm slightly, and I would like, and although I'm not a big fan of Afghan social life generally, I've always wanted to have a go at Bush Kazi, where you know that thing, it's like polo, but it's played with like a, uh, a, uh, a cow's head or a goat's head, uh, which, uh, and it's in pretty bad shape by the, generally by the end of the polo match. Uh, but I've always wanted to, I've always quite liked the idea, the, the guys are on horseback and they're just thwacking this, um, this carcass uh, around. It's, I, I think they start off, generally only the head is left, but I think they start off with most of the carcass, but bits of it drop off along the way. And on the whole, I, I would say I prefer a good game of Bushkazi to, uh, to your average, uh, to, to the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not... I don't want to sound un-American. I'm just saying, you know, if the Super Bowl guys want an, I want an idea how to freshen it up, instead of the lame-o Clint Eastwood Detroit ads and all the other nonsense, you know, why don't you get, why don't you have like the Kandahar Bushkazi team uh, versus uh, versus the Jalalabad Bushkazi team, and have all your tedious ads with Clint Eastwood and Janet Jackson and, uh, and everything in between? It could be big bucks. I'm just, I'm just throwing some ideas out here. We got to do something for this moribund. I think it's interesting to me that uh, you understand uh, when C.S. Lewis wrote The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and all the rest of it, that th th what is the core underpinning of that narrative. You understand um, differently, uh, but, to the, but in the same way that there is a profound meaning underpinning uh, Tolkien and Middle Earth. And that means that it's fine. People don't have to believe that. Liam Neeson, who does the voice of Aslan in the uh, in the Narnia movies, says, "Oh, all this Christian stuff is a lot of hooey," and uh, uh, I don't think that's what it's about at all. That's fine. When something is about something, it's easy to play off it and say, uh, "No, it isn't about that at all." But it seems to me that there is something empty at the heart of the Hunger Games, in that, in the end, the stakes aren't big enough. Uh, for it to quite work as a as a kind of uh, it, there's nothing primal uh, at stake in the Hunger Games, um, in part because I assume the author has no particular um, transcendent uh, meaning uh, to life; it doesn't subscribe to any. And I think there is an I think there's a kind of absence of that in the book. Yeah, and I think every I think trivial stories. Are, are always about something uh, big. I, when I was uh, uh, a child, I loved the the Prisoner of Zender, which is about an, a kind of English gentleman who goes, who's on a vacation in Central Europe and winds up standing in for a uh, a king uh, at his coronation in in Ruritania, and I, I loved it because it was not just because of the dash and swagger and the swashbuckling, but, but because there's something big at the heart of the story, that in a sense duty and honor compel a man to behave in certain ways. Well, uh, well about 10 years ago, uh, they remade that a as, um, as the movie Dave, in which Kevin Klein uh, gets, to sit, gets to pretend to be the President of the United States. And instead of the movie being about duty and honor and all the rest of it, 
It's about uh, getting Congress to pass an affordable housing bill. And I'm sorry, but you just can't hang, you can't, you can't hang something mythic and primal on that. Uh, and that's the great, I think that's the curse of sort of, and that's why I, I have a theory that uh, all effective storytelling is, is conservative, whether the author knows it or not, because there are cons- in, a con- in a conservative world there are consequences to what you, what you do. In a 19th century social novel, uh, a girl goes to a dance and she happens to accept a dance from the wrong man and her entire life changes because of the consequences of the choice she made. Uh, now there are no consequences to anything. Uh, you, you know, if you wake up in the morning and decide you want to be a woman, uh, you can become a woman, and Obamacare will probably uh, pay for it. Uh, so there are no, there are, so you can't really have. I don't think you can have effective storytelling in that kind of a world because uh, you you can't you, you can't drama depends on consequences. Uh, and if, as many liberals do, you believe in a world without uh, consequences and ir- individual responsibility, it's very, hard, it's very hard to have effective storytelling. Mark Stein will be speaking at the George Roche Sports Complex April 3rd at 8 p.m. For more information, check out hillsdalecollegian.com.